Welcome, Flores. Thank you. Welcome to, to the old boy podcast or whatever I'm going to call it. I'm not yeah. sure yet. So, um, last week I had Alexander visiting me for the first time. And we talked about different subjects that he was very interested in. Um, he talked mostly about... Um, well, one of the subjects was about uh, meeting people and taking responsibility for, for instance, if someone calls someone else a faggot on the street, and is it your responsibility to stand up for that person right, to, or to call that person yeah. out? Okay, then Are we then socially, you know, responsible for doing okay. that or not? Very interesting. We talked about it for a long time, so yeah. very interesting. And well, this week, uh, when you just came back from. Uh, yeah, I did. From a journey, um, you want to tell us something about it? Tell what you sure, did. Yeah, so uh, I went to Nepal for four months, mm -hmm. uh, and I did mostly hiking there, uh, just for like, um, yeah, because I like doing it. So mm -hmm. Not necessarily for something I wanted to achieve or something, but just because I enjoyed the hiking. And then afterwards, I went to this um, Buddhist monastery, which is, um, yeah, so I, where I got this introduction into. Buddhism and their way of thinking. Mm -hmm. was, that was mostly what I've been. Was it my, my most interesting part of the of the journey? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. The most interesting part. Yeah. So the the hiking and the Buddhists. Uh, no, the the, the just the Buddhist the thing. Buddhism, yeah. But well, like I, I enjoyed the hiking more definitely. Okay. But, uh, it was something I knew already. Uh -huh. know? And the um, the more world challenging part was the. Was the was the, 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 the Buddhist monastery? Yeah. Definitely. Okay. And what did you what would you say you most of them? Because in my experience, people tend to take like, travels and they kind of do it to get a gap year or find things out about themselves. Yeah. How did that happen? I'm always curious. Is that actually some of people kind of you know get, or is it more of like an idea and then you get back and you're kind of like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I, I don't know. I like now that I'm back. It's definitely everything is kind of the same. Um, but I didn't go to Nepal to like find myself or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> people go finding <laughs> themselves in Southeast yeah. Asia. Yeah, I, I wasn't. I didn't go there for that purpose. But mm -hmm. then uh, I read some books, and I was like, kind of um, got me interested into like the way of Buddhist thinking. Mm -hmm. You have all these very intelligent people right now who are very much. Uh, talking about how much meditation, for example, is very good for you. Mm -hmm. So that kind of got me interested, and I thought like I I want to do something else than just like traveling uh, through places. Mm -hmm. uh, and this place just like happened to be very much for Westerners, so it, I took the opportunity to. Like, yeah, yeah I don't know, it seemed interesting, and that definitely uh, is the main thing I took away from this trip. So it definitely like made start made me start thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so because you said that everything is kind of back to normal, but um, did you change? Like, because you said everything here is quite normal, but did you change? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, I have I have some ideas which I am thinking about a lot mm -hmm. at the moment. Like, like, uh, well, like meditation and um, just like the idea of self or uh, idea of suffering, mm -hmm. which I hadn't ever thought about or. I took a moment to like contemplate before, mm -hmm. uh, and like when once I was in that monastery, I started uh, noticing these things that they talked about in my personal life, and that's what I'm like. So uh, yeah, um, I'm noticing mostly yeah small mm -hmm. things like like when you're suffering, for example. Mm -hmm. And how did does that affect you now in your everyday life? Um, Which is maybe not at all. Yeah, well, it definitely does a little bit because, yeah. like, I have I have things to th to think about when I'm not doing anything, and that's kind of nice. Oh, that's that's different from before. Yeah, I think so. Okay. And like, uh, I have this main theme, which is now like, like the things I mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Those things keep me occupied while I'm like, in my head. Okay. And what are what what can you tell me some of the well some so of the things you think about uh, like consider? Yeah. So one of the main things they they say is. Um, well, they s s talked about there was um, that the natural state of living is suffering, mm -hmm. like or maybe not suffering, but uh, insatisfactoriness is what what the translation. Yeah. So like the opposite it, of pleasure. The so opposite of satisfaction. Oh, well, yeah, okay. So um, we're so what they say is we're constantly 
grasping at like things to do mm -hmm. um, that will make us happy. So I will, I will uh, eat some ice cream so that I'll be happy. And then once that ice cream is done, I, I'm, I feel a little bit, um, yeah, I feel a little bit sad or yeah, unhappy, unhappy yeah. because the ice cream. So I grasp at the next thing to do, mm -hmm. um, which gives me the feeling that I will, um, I will be happy then, and maybe I will have like this very uh, short period of very much satisfaction. But that those things are um, tend to be quite um, not lasting. Mm -hmm. um, so what they th say or what they think is that um, there is this um, the, the, like satisfaction shouldn't come from those things that you're doing, but should be something you can um, cultivate yourself without any of those uh, external factors. Which yeah. So happiness should come from the inside. Yeah. Because the way we experience the world is through our minds. So if you yeah. uh, like fix your mind to be satisfied uh, at all times that will be make your ex living experience way more satisfactory than the way it's going for most people so what is it what is it, like you because you're talking about like happiness so what's then the the goal of the, this this way of thinking about it like the not experiencing then the pleasure or the uh, not spirit experiencing suffering mainly i would say mm -hmm. with a goal, goal of of um yeah, leading a more satisfied life. Um, okay, yeah, but, but you take away happiness as well. Yeah, more satisfaction is, uh, like implies happy, more happiness. Yeah, so it's very Hinduistic then, or is it? Oh yeah, definitely. It's, yeah, Hindu, it's Hinduistic. Well, it's Hinduism. Buddhism, but yeah, yeah, but it's a lot of sides. Yeah, so it's, it's the idea of um, at the end of your life, basically uh, having the happiness minus your suffering equals your total happiness that's like a, i read today about hinduism okay. and hinduistic thinking and the idea is that <clears throat> over your whole lifetime you have like a certain amount of happiness and a certain amount of suffering yeah and if you basically take the, the whole amount of happiness minus the whole amount of suffering you have yeah. a surplus in happiness or you're, you're in okay, minus okay. of suffering yeah and the idea is that you want to have as much happiness at the end as possible yeah, well, that kind of makes sense, right? Yeah, and a lot of a lot of people live this way, you know. Yeah. Um, like life is worth it when there's more happiness than suffering. Yeah, I, I would say so. Yeah, yeah, like of course, I think that's indeed the goal for many people. Yeah. But um, then you have also like a lifestyle that many people, yeah, you know, we can call it the pleasure life, the good life that some people imagine, it. and that's the idea of actually like more materialistic that you are. You take it all only or mostly from act, ex, uh, things from the outside. Yeah. Um, and this lifestyle actually has a way more suffering, and more. You know, I wouldn't call it an extra happiness. It can be sort of yeah. It's, it's happiness, but it is more based on short-term happiness. Yeah. That's a little bit more extreme, like buying a new TV. Yeah. Uh, you know, after three months or something, people are used to it and they forgot they had an older TV. You know, yeah. and. But it, it does cause happiness, but it's less sustainable. Yeah. And uh, but it, it, yeah, and it often causes also more suffering because you, um, yeah, well, you, you spend money on certain things, but once once you're used to it, you're back to the old place basically. Yeah. You know, it, there's no building up. So this lifestyle, they some people say that this lifestyle uh, is a kind of an extreme lifestyle. Yeah. But for, according to like the Hinduistic way of thinking, at the end, you end up with more suffering than happiness that's kind of the argument yeah. against it so you would say like um so if you would put like your happiness and suffering in a graph it would be like the extreme lifestyle would be like yeah this, um, where, where the dolls are probably deeper than the, than the peaks yeah that's yeah. what they think oh deeper okay yeah so it's, it's not worth it in a lot of yeah. people say but still a lot of people do it especially in yeah, the west definitely. i would say and how, what do you think of that? What's your experience yeah, to so be in like a monastery and what they teach you about the Western way of doing this stuff? Yeah, so like the Western way is very much criticized when you're at the, at this, in, in the monastery. Yeah. Bit. Um, and um, yeah, so what they say is like the default mode of people is to be like that, mm -hmm. to grasp at all these uh, material materialistic things. Uh -huh. um, and they say like these things co inevitably cause suffering um because you get attached to them so 
So you have aversion for things which causes suffer suffering. Yeah, aversion meaning like um, you don't like certain things mm -hmm. um, and you don't like certain states so you try to get out of those and the things you like you, you get attached to um, and they say those things are also will cause you suffering in the long run mm -hmm. um, so they kind of like um, the monastic way is to like um, renounce yourself from all these things to say like okay I don't need all these attachments uh, and I will lead a simpler life which will um, like not distract you as much uh, from from world with worldly things and will keep your mind uh, occupied with mm -hmm. the experience of being yeah and they say like the experience of um, like being in the present moment which is kind of a cliche but it's they say it's very much uh, a very wise thing that if you manage to the more you stay at this moment yeah. you're not worrying about like uh, future things for example uh, getting to a certain point or the past where you're just worrying about things that happened mm -hmm. they say like if you're managed to be in the present moment for a longer time this will result in you being more happy yeah in the long run in the long run more satisfied state of being but doesn't that cause like because if you can't think about the future you can't be either neither optimistic nor pessimistic about the future right um, if you stay in the moment and you don't think about the future, you're just in the now. Yeah. But like your 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 state of being, if you're happy or unhappy, it has a lot to do with the future and the way you perceive the future. Yeah. yeah. If you if you think that tomorrow is going to be a better day than today, or yeah. you know, that would make so, it more positive. Yeah. So isn't it then like kind of being more numb? Um, in a way. Yeah. So they more, more more stable. Yeah, they would call it more stable and like as in uh, netto. Um, be more happy in general because mm -hmm. um, they would say if you're um, optimistic about the future partly that is also um, like making expectations of the future which if they those come uh, don't come true will like you will be attached to those expectations mm -hmm. and if those expectations don't come true that will make you suffer also mm -hmm. um, so not expecting too much they will say will cause you to be uh, happier also yeah life. but you don't have like for instance you can tell yourself like for instance i i want to be a coach yeah. in positive psychology yeah. or in a trainer that's a goal but it's also an expectation to myself yeah so if i fail in doing that that it costs suffering but yeah. it also causes um like if you're highly optimistic and you think of it like okay i want to reach that you imagine that but to do that there's going to be a long road and there are going to be a lot of obstacles if you're just going to be i mean you're, you're going to be optimistic in a way but i want to reach that i can reach that but yeah. there are you know obstacles on the way and if you're just realistic about the fact that there are going to be hard times but i feel like avoiding the hard times by just not having a goal yeah isn't really a way of way dealing of with it yeah uh, living I, enjoying life kind yeah, of. yeah 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 i I agree with that definitely. Like um, the things they teach there, I must say I don't exactly know if I remembered everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way I perceive okay. it, they, they, it's very extreme. Disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> um, like it, it's quite an extreme yeah. point of view to um, uh, to say like don't have any expectations of the future because you're gonna have at least some probably right. Yeah, yeah, um, bro, yeah. In, in term in the uh, terms of goals, but. Um, and I don't think um, I don't think it's a bad thing to have positive goals. Mm -hmm. I want to reset, but there is a balance in this. In that, um, you can have those goals, but you shouldn't grasp at it too much. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of if that goal doesn't happen, that you will just like fall apart. You mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like um, it's like I would say definitely. Uh, proactiveness is very uh, will, will make you more happy in general so yeah. having goals to, to yeah. be proactive about is very it will mm -hmm. give you more happiness but those things could also give you some suffering at least um, because you, you, you get attached to the, yeah. to the goals um, and yeah so if, I think it's important to keep in mind then that if you don't do not reach your goals yeah. um, it, it 
is uh, at that moment you 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 have to realize like, like okay this is reality like this is uh, I didn't reach my goals yeah um, but why be unhappy about it? Because yeah um, yeah. I don't know. Well, my experience is because I would say that I'm a, I mean, I, I did a test and, and I'm a very happy person okay. according to this psychological <laughs> test. Uh, in the top 90s, uh, in the top 3% of happiest people in the, well, that is the test, about 10,000 people or something. So I would say I'm a generally happy person. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, you know me for a long time, so you can maybe yeah, I would, I would, yeah, agree. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, but my experience is that um, the optimistic lifestyle being proactive in this is that you don't reach your goal and instead of being sad about it you're like okay why didn't i reach it and then reflect on the past and then be like oh i can improve yeah. and then you have new goals to improve upon and in this way you can kind of keep being positive and working towards things because there's always something to learn if you don't reach the goal yeah because this Definitely. i'm like i i don't have enough experience maybe to say that you know you can always Act and learn from it, but I would say that you know, it's it's either that you have have had have control over it, or you didn't have control over it. And in both situ in one situation, if you didn't have control over it, you don't have to feel bad about it. Yeah. But if you have control over it, you don't have to feel bad about it because now you can act on it. Yeah, that's the way I see it. That's um, a stoic way of thinking. Yeah, is it? Yeah, it's not, but it's like, I know that in the East they also have there. Yeah, there's this saying, um, which is like. Um, if it's uh, what is it? Like, if something is not to your liking, and you can change it. Then change it and don't worry about it. If something is not to your liking, but you cannot change it, why worry about it? Yeah. So that that's kind of similar, but then for you with gold. Um, so like worrying about uh, the reality that's not the way it is. Mm -hmm. So basically, which is basically expectations versus reality. Yeah. That so not accepting the way things are is very much a cause for suffering, mm -hmm. which is kind of unnecessary, I think. Yeah, so having higher expectation than the reality causes suffering. But it's also, the, I, I would say it's also the other way around, because I see a lot of people in the world that have lower expectations than reality, mm. and that causes uh, inactiveness. Yeah. Of being like, I can't change the future, I can't, uh, or till till they think that they can change the future to a certain amount. Well, I think, but I'm very optimistic, so maybe I'm wrong. Um, that I, it can be more. Yeah. You know, and I I kind of believe that in that way is also a self fulfilling prophecy in the way of like, if you believe you can achieve more, you will work harder, and yeah. you will or and, and you're optimistic, so you're probably going to be happier about it. And if you don't believe in it, then you're not going to reach as much and you're going to be pessimistic about it yeah. and you're going to be yeah m more unhappy about it probably yeah, yeah but your expectation you're going to reach your expectations though because you, you don't <laughs> yeah you know what i mean you're going to reach yeah, them yeah, and yeah. but I, I i'm doubting if that will make you more happy mm. what do you think well i don't yeah like it seems like an obvious you think um, i don't know an example of like no i don't know um, setting yourself up for lower yeah setting yourself up for lower expectations because you're more pessimistic mm -hmm. um, that is also like a gap between reality and yeah, right. it's expectations yeah. Um, but then like the other way around um, so maybe like even if you reach those expectations you um, the reality is that you could have uh, achieved more yeah um, which could have made you more happy I think um, I think so as well but it's and, and, and it's also it's, it's about your goals. Yeah, that mindset will make you yeah, make, make you more negative. Because because I mean, what are your ideas about then goal setting? Because if you, um, I mean, we're talking about goals right now, but um, you can have different type of goals. I mean, I learned today something about it, but it's like interesting to think what is like you can for instance you can you can aim for the right goal that's uh, maybe too low for you, you can reach higher, but it's, it's really, like, you, you reach it. Yeah. Uh, but I think that it really depends on what your goal, if, if it makes you happy, yes or no. Um, so you, know, you mean like setting the right goals? Yeah, setting the right goals, because okay. I think that certain, like, especially, uh, for instance, I think you can make a difference in, again, like we talked about internal and external, 
and I feel like you have external goals that are mostly means, like money, like uh, I want to have money. Yeah. But that's always an external goal to another factor that's probably again internal, because like, you use the money for something, just yeah. like power. You want to reach power, but you use power for something else. Yeah. While you have internal goals um, of like reaching more happiness, but you can't just say I want to be more happy, but you can say I want to have meaning or something. Yeah. Uh, or I want to have more relationships, and that's an internal goal that you internally. Well, I wouldn't say reach. having more relationships is an internal thing. I would say that. that you don't think so? No, because it's very much into, um, like, the, the people you want to have a relationship with are very much an external. I mean, that's a that's I think that's the difference between having the people you want to have relationships with and the fact that you want to have relationships because you want to have relationships with people as a human being because you're human yeah. and that's an internal factor just the fact that you can't just be friends with anybody and certain people you, you can say like I want to first I can say I want to be friends with Bill Gates yeah. but that's not going to be possible and then you have like an external goal that's actually inter- it will never satisfy my internal piece of being social yeah, if yeah. that's my goal but I do think that it comes from the inside, but you indeed you can make it external. But if you keep it to the internal factor of like I just want to have friends, then it's an internal thing I think, because you're just being nice to people to make friends, and you don't have a criteria for who's going to be that thing. Uh, like I would I would still call that an external thing. I think um, hmm. um, I would say like internal goals. Maybe we have like very different definitions of internal and external but i would say okay okay well, that could be uh, but that's internal goals would be like reaching a state where you for example developing concentration mm-hmm. or uh developing a more lasting satisfaction from all all external things um and um saying like i want to like be more social make more friends is um you interacting with the outside world um and in terms of like Buddhist view that would be a very much external uh, thing and internal things would be something which you can um, yeah basically do wait while you're just sitting somewhere without the need of anything mm-hmm. but you would you say that um, the external factor of it that you can um, actually, I mean, there are people in the world. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, that's that's my point. Like, you don't. Like, you don't. First, if you would be alone in the world, yeah, you would be probably suffering because it wouldn't be very nice to be alone. You need social relationship. It doesn't mean that you need social interaction with friends, maybe, but you need social interaction with either maybe even animals. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you would be alone on an island and there would be a dog, you would be best friends with the dog because you need that. That's a. You need the interaction. You need the interaction. We're, we're wired to make interactions. Yeah. Uh, so. Biologically. Yeah. Yeah, biologically. So I would say that it's, in one way, it's a need, to fulfill, um, and that you, don't have to be dependent on, a certain, person or a certain group of people, but you can be basically friends of anybody or interact with anybody yeah. or any animal but any being yeah any being yeah but you yeah. i do think you need that interaction um, uh, even even though it might have a certain amount of dependency yeah but you can never i feel like if, if you're completely independent of everything and you just sit alone somewhere for the rest of your life um i don't think that is really gonna make you happy or something yeah um so that, that's what would no. Buddhist view would be that um, that that can definitely make you happy because they would say like your uh, experience, your life experience mm-hmm. is um, determined way more by uh, your state of mind than uh, your uh, external all external factors. So that being any um, like any relations you have with people or any mm-hmm. things you have, yeah. they say like the the way you perceive the world is through your mind. So developing this mind would give you um, way more happiness. That wouldn't say that, that yeah. uh, like mo- so most people would be very much miserable at, on, alone on an island. Yeah, 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 would yeah. be very much happier when there are other people. But they say that still um, developing your state of mind will bring you a, a different 
and way more um, lasting peace of mind. And because you say mind, and of course our mind is built on unconscious and conscious, and we're talking about you want to like basically control the conscious mind to a place that you are detached from everything. Yeah. In well, it, look, um, not not even. So like not being attached to anything is such a ambitious goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically yeah. that uh, that's not even necessary. But just being content with being alone. Mm -hmm. um, for you to do that, would you would be need to um, like yeah develop your your mind. So, yeah. Um, in that way, like um, what that would be is I think finding. Um, like learning about your own mind, about the characteristics of your own mind, and developing the skills to uh, ha get a better grip on it. Mm -hmm. So, because like, um, well, so what I noticed when I started meditating at this, uh, so like for longer durations of time, mm -hmm. sorry, I I don't done it before for five minutes a day and stuff. Mm -hmm. But when when we did this uh, course, we had to uh, meditate for hours a day in like short mm -hmm. intervals of like twenty minutes. Yeah. And they say like um, in some mindfulness exercise you have to start watching your thoughts, and mm -hmm. only then do you start doing that. And um, like those are like they say, um, look at the characteristics of your mind. So just or right, of your thoughts. So see them arising, and look at the, the shape of it. Is it like a sound or is it a, 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 a voice or is it a picture? Mm -hmm. And then look at it. Uh, subsiding again like they say like waves in the ocean so the waves come up yeah, and the ocean yeah. itself stays um, and once you start doing that and once you start also doing the concentration meditations for longer times you see how distracted the people are mm -hmm. in general like at least I am and I think <laughs> most people are yeah, 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 I can yeah. only speak for myself here but mm -hmm. um, and th so they say like this distractedness is such a cause of suffering mm -hmm. that it trumps all so like getting control over this will make you far more happy than all external things can mm -hmm. well what i noticed through my because in my, in my last half a year because i've started to follow like the master pyramid a lot from the start yeah what i noticed a lot is that when it comes to this concentration exercise because i've been doing meditation as well is that because um, there's in um, um, there's this idea that you your unconscious is kind of like making feelings sometimes because you feel hungry unconsciously you you feel alone unconsciously it's not the conscious thing you can necessarily control sometimes yeah and but you can tell yourself to to kind of ignore that feeling or you can learn to deal with that feeling internally instead of actually extending it but what I started doing is that I started designing my life in a way of meeting those needs yeah. in a way that I need it for me and what I notice is that whenever now I sit down uh, with myself I can control my thoughts and just think about nothing so much clearer it's it's crazy like for me it's like if I, I can sit down for 10 or 15 minutes and just have the whole period of time just think about almost nothing just breathing and just sitting Really, and then just yeah. one thought thought comes in, and I just realize it, and I just let it go. Yeah, and I, I never really practice a lot of meditation, but it's it's getting really easy because I, I whenever I think or something, it's really there's not much in my head. Hmm. It feels like I don't have a lot of. Uh, are you sure that you're not um, thinking like? Um, to yourself, like, oh, I'm meditating, I'm meditating, no, I'm meditating. No, I, I, I'm I, thinking about I, my breath. I mostly, I mean, yeah, of course, you, 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 you the way you see it is like you focus on your breath yeah, yeah. Um, to a certain extent. By, yeah. which, uh, you, I mean, I did meditation and I, I, I did Headspace at some point, the app that helps okay. you meditate. And, yeah, it learns you to meditate. And what I notice is that you focus on your breath. But the, the more it slows down, uh, or, or you first take some deep breaths, the more you get into it, you focus on your body, you feel things, you, 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 you check, you know, you go, you focus your thoughts on certain things. Um, but this, the exercise of mindfulness, and that's what I mean, I'm mindful, is not to think about nothing, but it's more to control your thought and realize when something pops up some, without that you have control over it, and then realize it, and then let it go again. Yeah. 
and, and, and I know that for me it's that started to be so much easier oh, really? to control yeah. what I'm focused on it's like I can focus on my breathing and then I can just focus on what how do I feel like what, what's yeah. going on just fo- feeling your body or then I can just from there I can just go to my ears and just listen to things and without being bored and that's the difference because before I would be bored in like two minutes yeah <laughs> I would just be like bored and just start thinking about shit but now I somehow I don't have that anymore I don't know and oh, I, really? I'm not sure of course if that's related to what I'm doing because I'm not doing research or something I cannot factually say but what I just noticed is that <clears throat> I feel very like when I do this I feel very satisfied yeah well, I would I would say like that doing meditation at some point will give you some yeah. satisfaction. So that's for me. Um, yeah. Well, well, I don't know. Personally, for me, I like I still, um, I still started noticing how much I distracted I get. Yeah. Uh, when I started doing this, so. But what what, um, what are the things you do that pop up in you? That's. Well, like uh, so, everything you, you get distracted by an itch you get, and then you, you focus on that, and then. You, you think okay this is like yeah. I this itch. Um, I'm meditating so I need to I go back to my breath mm-hmm. um, but it's it's the itch days like uh, well, yeah a little bit so yeah um, but then like at some point it, it fades and you so you focus on your breath again and then it, it, very fast something pops up again and, yeah um, yeah f- 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 what I have experienced and what I know of most people uh, yeah. that they it's really hard to um, stay concentrated, really stay concentrated on something uh, for a long period of time. People, um, me included, I uh, cannot focus on something purely focused, like 100% yeah. focus on something for more than a second or two uh, without something popping up, something uh, maybe not fully taking you away from yeah. it, but at least some, like, some thought about the past, the future. Um, mm. A sound that distracts you and uh, noticing only noticing uh, this was for me to start um, so noticing how much this happens yeah. because when I started meditating I thought oh yeah I'm very good at this I, uh-huh. I'm, I'm focusing on my breath 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 you know and but those are thoughts as well yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And only like the, the the raw data of the feeling of yeah uh, so I, like I focus on my chest the feeling of movement of my chest will be my point of concentration and only focusing on that is for me nearly impossible to do for a long time um but yeah that's a so it's a point of that to like yeah. first notice this yeah, and yeah, yeah see it as a problem and seeing yeah uh, yeah I'm keep doing it before so that you train it mm-hmm. because like, how do what does they what do they say about emotions in this because you know we're talking about thoughts yeah but how do emotions play a role in this and do, you, do they say anything about that yeah um so for in terms of like for concentration meditations yeah know? but in general like what do they say about emotions <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> yes yeah um, it's an interesting topic if, yeah, you, so yeah. if you talk about thoughts i feel like emotions because in psychology we sometimes say certain ideas that uh, emotions arrive from thoughts yeah. And that's definitely in a certain way true, but I also noticed that some emotions come from, uh, f- I feel like in- unconscious, like unconscious emotions of like the reptile brain and, you yeah. know, because their brains are like built up from different things. And yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah, those, brain. those are like emotions that just pop up and you're just like, oh, why am I so angry? Like yeah. the, 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 the fight or flight reaction or something, you know, these type of reactions. So yeah, anger or boredom or yeah. frustration. Just, uh, I think that that's not necessarily from like a conscious thought. Uh, yeah. Not all, only emotions arise from conscious thoughts. I, yeah. I think in Buddhist, well, at least uh, the Buddhist tradition I uh, I got taught in, they they very much think that as well. So mm-hmm. they say for concentration meditations, say like if anything pops up, that is not you, the the point of your concentration. Yeah. Being emotions or thoughts, mm-hmm. um, that that is a distraction. So the feeling of being bored is a distraction or feeling of frustration like shit I'm, I'm like uh i don't, I don't want to do this why am i yeah, doing this yeah, yeah, yeah. or pains for example um just like sensory perceptions uh-huh. um it's like an itch or what, yeah what, what, what you, like if you start no so what, yeah when i started no, uh, focusing all the on all these things mm-hmm. 
were trying not to focus on all these things. Um, yeah, it was insane how much uh, like you cannot sit still for for ten minutes without like moving because something is starting to yeah uh, like hurt. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Uh, in terms of yeah, so other emotions that were what they talk about this. For, for how for how long did you meditate? Just like the. Um, how much, like how like in, in total? In total, it, like just the, the, the how the session. How long was the session? So uh, we did like this. Um, well, I did two courses. So one course okay. was the meditation course. So yeah. we did uh, for a few days there. We did um, morning meditation, which was twenty minutes of concentration meditations, and then usually like some uh, mantra or um, mantra meditations or some guidance meditations, uh -huh. being like on, on impermanence or in, on death. Or, okay. Uh, and then uh, for about five hours sessions, uh, five hour one hour sessions yeah like one hour sessions yeah, yeah. Uh, we did at least like uh, 20 minutes of concentration meditation in each uh -huh. and then something else uh, some other guided meditation so it was um, in short bursts yeah it wasn't like for yeah, yeah it wasn't like, like long for, periods of for time. hours yeah. of sitting down so they said, uh, at, all, at some point they said like, okay you know get up get a stretch and then in five minutes we go again we go yeah <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again, let's go. Yeah. yeah. So, what do they? What do? I don't, what do they say about emotion and how to regulate them? Um, I think they treat emotions very much as thoughts, mm -hmm. or like in the same way, mm -hmm. as in they arise. Um, but the important thing with emotions for, uh, so we the second course was on disturbing emotions. Um, okay. And, and they talked about very much. Uh, you cannot. In the beginning, you cannot control your emotions or anything. Mm -hmm. You can't be like, "Oh, I'm gonna be not not gonna be angry today." Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, So the important, they would say, being mindful of your emotions arising, and then either uh, concentrating on these emotions, mm -hmm. because what you will see is if you if you're if anger comes up, yeah, um, and you concentrate on the pure feeling of this anger, yeah. if you contemplate this long enough, it will disappear. Yeah. Um, or just like questioning it, questioning your yeah. your reaction to things. Like why am I angry? Um, which is like this very rational way of like, okay. just like asking why all the time yeah, 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 about yeah. everything. Like, yeah, like this is what I do a lot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, a <laughs> little kid way. Like, yeah, where, where yeah, yeah. the kid asks why, and then the parents gives an answer, and then the kid asks, him, but "Why is that?" And, yeah. you know, but, um, and this is a very good way to uh, deal with your emotions to understand them. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I would, and um, yeah, what they say is that m most of these disturbing emotions come from ego. So your ego being attacked in some way, um, and um, yeah, like, so for example, like pride is always like very, it's very, um, it's very easily hurt. Mm -hmm. like people start questioning themselves, yeah, yeah. getting anxious or getting like uh, self-conscious about that. Mm -hmm. They would say that suffering and those are um, uh, emotions of pride. And yeah, are therefore quite unnecessary, mm -hmm. and you can train yourself to, uh, yeah, get rid of them basically mm -hmm. through meditation. And then what about like for instance anger? Um, if in what form like. Like, in instance, do they say that for instance, anger is always bad? Uh, yeah, I think so. And, and would you say that anger is always bad? Um, yeah, I, th I think so, yeah. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't... Uh, uh, yeah, in what case would you say that anger would be... If you get attacked? Um, I think that anger is a very good defensive mechanism. Yeah. And there are certain ways that it's very positive. Yeah, so it's very much this primal thing, but uh, they would say, um, and I kind of like I'm kind of starting to believe this. Mm -hmm. um, the anger itself is not necessary to defend yourself, so you can just as well defend yourself while being fully, fully realizing that the person who is attacking you is suffering. That this is their way of trying to become more happy. Yeah, um, you know that this is a very, uh, you know very bad way of becoming more happy so but you can try to defend yourself but the anger will make you strike back instead of diffusing a, a situation
So yeah, uh, and I I'm I'm kind of st- starting to agree on this. Well, the, the way I see like I don't think that n- like for instance uh, positive emotions aren't always positive and negative emotions aren't always, always negative. Like yeah. if you were for instance happy or um, uh, enjoying a lot, that can sometimes um, cause you to be inactive, not pursue yeah. your goals. Um, if you're too optimistic, you might not, you know, you feel like everything's just going to be fine. You don't go for your goals. Yeah, okay. and So the positive emotions definitely have negative consequences if they're too much. And so I think that negative emotions also can have positive effects if they're in small amounts. Like I feel like a small amount of anger or a small amount of frustration sometimes can make you um, act. For yeah. instance, whenever it comes to friendships, um, if you're frustrated by friends, it, it, this frustration causes you to start talking about something or it's uh, the way I see emotions in general is a feedback loop of the body so the way that it, like you for instance you get angry it's not like oh I'm gonna hit it no it's like why am I angry what's happening yeah it, it activates you and it's every emotion is this way like if I'm if I'm happy why am I happy you know I, I'm very like it's like yeah. I ask a lot of questions whenever yeah. it comes to my emotions but I, I see it as a feedback loop so whenever I feel negative emotions it's like why do I feel negative emotion what's going on yeah yeah it can very it but can definitely teach you a lot yeah and i feel like that is like so it, it's not negative emotions aren't always bad yeah they can teach you actually how to be feel better because they are basically telling you like i don't know what the fuck you're doing <laughs> but you're not doing the right thing yeah. right now for us because you're you, i don't know who's fucking with us but something is up you know yeah. and you got to change that right now and then you have to act on it and i think that that's a very positive thing of bad emotions yeah so they can Negative definitely emotions. be beneficial i would say but they wouldn't be the goal <clears throat> yeah, no no they're not the be, goal being angry or being frustrated is not no it's the a reason th- you do things no but it's this is this is like fear fear is one of the greatest human motivations there is yeah to not achieve something uh the fear of not achieving something or failing um is the greatest motivator for people yeah i mean you know there's had this that talk about a guy who um did never do anything with his life with his brother like he and his brother were just procrastinating everything okay and then his um grandma asked for a music tape and he would make it and she was in the hospital and he and his brother would make it and they procrastinated and then his grandma died okay yeah. and they were sick of it they were like we can't do this and then they looked up in the internet and they found a way of doing it the other way around of like motivation and it was basically whatever i think i'm not sure if this is exactly the way it works but i think it's the way of like whenever you want to you tell each other for instance we tell each other our goals yeah yeah, and what we're going to do if i don't do it you beat the shit out of me so yeah it's it's really that way in a way of like you um, you basically start fearing not doing anything more than doing anything because it's always scary and it's I mean I wouldn't advise people to do this in this you know big of amount yeah but the way I see it is that it has a powerful idea of the way that like you need to uh, imagine a life that is worse or you're afraid of that might happen if you don't do anything because then you will start acting it's like using your yeah. fear as a positive motivator yeah, and, and they was and they made this like artificial uh, fear right yeah they made this artificial fear and it really helped them they become became really successful yeah and and, and i mean and one went to harvard and the other one did his own thing and it's like right. so it's like in, this, in, in a way i see this as like you, you're basically using your negative emotions in a positive way yeah although but, it's not the goal to fear it's the goal to be happy, but you, you by fearing you become happy yeah. in a way. But you should not fear the wrong things. Because for instance, if you're, um, I, yeah, what, what is right or wrong? It's also a question. But I mean, um, if you are afraid, for instance, a co- of starting a company, a company or as yeah. an entrepreneur, a lot of people like fear taking the first steps. Yeah. Um, what if I fail? What if this happens? What if, and then it's, I think then it can be very useful to make up something what if i don't do this where am i in 10 years then and imagine that picture yeah like, if i don't reach anything i don't start this company and then 
making that picture for yourself very clearly felt like, oh shit, you know, I, re- I feared that more <laughs> than now taking this first step. Yeah. So like you have to choose between two fears and you. No. Well, yeah, you take make this rational decision. I think. Um, of yeah, try which would give you uh, more happiness in the long run. That's the goal, right? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 um, I think making this artificial fear of some someone beating you up if you don't do yeah, something, yeah, yeah. it's kind of it doesn't it's a bit that, extreme. Yeah, but doesn't that give you uh, like a, a st- strange relationship with being idle with not doing anything? Um, just like if you do this enough. I can imagine that, that you would be at all times be like, oh shit, I should be doing something productive because I'm like, I'm just hanging out. And then like, it I depends. Feel getting beat up by my brother. Because I actually talked about this lately a lot, and that's that um, if you set for yourself a goal, it's not about being busy with the goal all the time because the goal is time orientated. So, for instance, if you say in a month I'm going to do this, and you're way ahead of schedule, you can sit around and do nothing. But if you're a week away from your goal and you can do anything, yeah, then you should probably, when you don't do anything, be doing something. Yeah. Because it's your goal and it's your time limit that you put on it. So in a way, like, I, I, I don't think, it depends, like, I don't think you should, you know, push yourself in a way that every minute of every day is going to be orientated on that goal. Um, okay, so, like, setting the goal is, is uh, would be, um, so... In the case of being getting beat up by your brother, yeah. you would have to communicate with him what your goal is. Exactly, yeah, very clearly. Um, and, and make it very specific, <laughs> smart. You make so it you smart. Can come you up know? to your house and then beat you up because you're yeah, watching uh, Netflix. Yeah, you're watching Netflix. But it's like because you didn't reach it. Like it's there's just a certain point you meet each other, you have a goal in that moment. Yeah, you yeah, meet yeah. each other and you're did you reach it? No. And then you know you motivate each other <laughs> in a very disturbing way. Yeah. But I, I, but I, I do think that because I, uh, I did the self offering from Jordan Peterson. That's uh, I didn't tell you about that. It's um, um, there are four offerings, and that's about writing about yourself. It's a present. It's about um, you know, the present and you write about yourself, and it's like all each the four of them, and they're each six hours. Uh, and there are ways of defining what you want in, in life in the future okay. it's defining how your past was like an autobiography they're about your weaknesses what are your weaknesses and they're about your strengths okay so you write this short piece or what, what, what is he, the format he, there are like many f- each each of them costs six hours so yeah. uh, for instance the, 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 the one about your talents um, he he, he they're like based on your uh, personality. You have lists of what do you recognize yourself in, the things you're good at. Yeah. And you just you know click on certain ones, you know, and then they they I, I ask you to pick certain things out of it, uh, to uh that are like mostly you, and okay. then you have to write small pieces about it, and then you have to um think of things how you could use this more in your life and how this has benefited you in the past and you know yeah. a lot of these things. And for the future one, this was very interesting. They asked a lot about what your first a general idea of what you want in the future. And then it goes on to more specific goals, sub goals. And at the end, you have to write about what happens if you don't reach any of your goals. And that was very interesting because they actually use the fear method. And it's actually, yeah. and then the thing is, for this, this also offering, John Peterson really tried to use as much psychological. Um, uh, research uh, underlying it so and this is actually something that is to describe something you fear of what will happen if you don't reach these goals yeah. and for that to happen I think it's very important to know what you want because what I noticed is that for instance when I did this it's about two or three months ago I had a not that clear of a picture of what I wanted and it makes basically not reaching my goals not that bad yeah <laughs> and it makes you not you know go for it very hardly and and, and discovering what you want uh in my opinion um well because we talked about um reaching your goals or and, and um um what i really feel like is that um and then also not reaching your goals and i feel like if you use your talents or your passion 
or I don't know if passion is really a thing, but more like your talent, what you're good at, and you develop a certain job, and you have some goals on that, it's never that bad if you don't accomplish the things you set out to do, because you're still doing the thing that you love. Okay, so you get this baseline of... Yeah, uh, of enjoyment. Yeah. And, I, and I'm really, right now, I've been really doing a lot of psychological things, tests online, and doing plus the psychology course to also develop more of an idea of um, what my strengths are. Yeah. And uh, there's a test uh, that everybody can do. You can do it and they can do it. That's on authentichappiness.com. And there's a 24 uh, strengths test. And it's very interesting that you have 240 questions and about you have to basically rate yourself. And for me, for instance, one of my main talents or strengths, they call it strengths, very um, is uh, creativity. And the way they did this, uh, it's very interesting, is that they took uh, a lot of data from the past because um, they're fir fir virtues. And what is a virtue? Like, which one do you pick? Because there are a lot of things people like uh, to be good at or yeah. they're good at or value. But they have certain, for instance, that needed to be culturally, generally in cultures accepted throughout religions as well. And it needed to be... Wait, um these are strength or yeah, virtues that means for instance so wisdom wisdom yeah. is a virtue and those are things you want to uh, yeah obtain, obtain. okay yeah, and generally accept and it's generally accepted across culture because what i did is they they i think they read a lot of like books for instance like the uh the the the, the bible or stuff like that and they analyzed you know what virtues do this every culture and a religion and stuff you know appreciate yeah uh want to achieve and there are six out of that that were uh, every cross culture yeah. and stuff as they it was like one of them is wisdom i think one of them is courage um well a couple of them and then they basically um saw that every virtue or they researched every virtue was obtainable from different paths they call it yeah. pathways for instance wisdom can be obtained by creativity curiosity love of learning perspective there are different things that you can be wise in yeah and um, so that's how they developed this test and from there on and the idea of the test that's the cool, most cool thing that I'm very cool about is that it's the opposite of the uh, DSM DSM is the disorder thing that psychologists use to you know analyze if people have a disorder yes or no okay you, the, like the, the symptoms yeah. and, you have so, and you need this amount of symptoms to have depression for instance yeah. and what they did was basically okay but if we have a way to say this is wrong with you you yeah. need also a way of saying this is right with you yeah. and that's why they make this test and there's even a whole book with exactly you know, what strengths and what when you have certain strengths and it's very cool to read them about for instance, from, so my first one is creativity they, they only give you your top five and it's very cool to realize how that affect my life and how that's already how i can use that more in my life and they have certain tasks to do that and yeah. for instance, one of the things that creativity is not just, you know, being artistic, but the way they describe it is, for instance, that you want to do everything um, optimal and you don't want to do things um, in the most common way necessary. So whenever there's an other way of doing something that you think is better, you'll do it. Yeah. That's also being creative. Yeah. And um, new solutions. Yeah. And that's really something that I, yeah, new solutions that have value. Yeah. And, and that's really something that I really recognize in my life and uh, that I constantly do. And when I started thinking about it and uh, for instance, one of the exercises thinking about it in the past and then sharing a story with a friend and that f makes your relationship stronger. And it's really true to tell about something that your strength, what one of your strengths is, and then yeah. the other person is as well, it really enhances your relationship. Yeah. and. These type of exercises, I feel like, are because uh, you're it's a part of your identity. What the Buddhist culture is kind of like against, but it it's, it doesn't really backfire in my opinion. There's no because you just know what you're good at, yeah, and you, you develop a, like they, they advise, for instance using these strengths in an everyday task, for instance. It's just a way of. Yeah, just basically making yourself a bit more happy because you're good at that. You like doing that. It's your nature, and it's like for yeah. Me, so it, yeah, the, the the goal of those tests is to find your strength, basically, and, then and you apply the, that to all 
your daily life. Yeah, and the, it's the opposite idea okay. of, of uh, for instance, people are a lot of times working on their weaknesses. Yeah. And this idea is basically your weaknesses are your weaknesses, but just focus on your strengths and yeah. how to develop your strengths more and use them more in your life. Okay. And fall back on them more. Yeah. And I like that. Um, yeah, like, it makes sense, right? Uh, I would say, uh, yeah, finding out what you're good at. Um, and using your yeah playing to your strength is, is seems like a logical thing to do mm -hmm. to to obtain your goals. Um, no, not just your. I feel like it's in general to to, to be, find more happiness. Yeah, to find more happiness. Yeah, and I think well, um, that's where Buddhism is kind of disagrees with. Yeah, is that this conditionality on being good in things is not gonna give you uh, it's gonna give you lasting happiness. Um, but it's not about being good. It's about it's your strengths, right? Yeah, but it's about yeah, it's your strength. But it's about often you you just enjoy what you're good at. So it's about the enjoyment you get from doing the task instead of okay. So the the, the pride like, you get from being good at it. Um. But so it's about finding the things you want to do, or is it about the finding the things you're good at and applying those things? Um. Finding, finding the things you're good at, and then applying them. I would say, yeah, okay. and do, but not with the idea of to, to, to not for your own pride of being like I'm good at this, mm -hmm. you know, and then getting happiness from that. Yeah, this is this one. It's this one. Okay, but it's uh, I think it's about um, um, you finding your strengths to use them more and from using your strengths you just obtain happiness because you, you're good at those things yeah and, and, you, and not, you, not, you don't you know I don't think those that happiness comes from doing the test the right way but for instance for me uh, it's a strength of me because it's I, I do this like I, I do this even though I didn't know it was a strength yeah. of me I just so it's do in your it. nature it's too. in my nature it's like I, I see it as a nature thing of like um, I'm just good at doing creative stuff like i'm just i just do these things like for instance yeah. i i started drinking shakes uh so i don't know if you remember but i drink i started drinking smoothies yeah. during the day so i so i can prepare my smoothies in the morning and i'm this that this attached from um a physical place to be where food is or having to bring sandwiches or taking time to eat my sandwiches or something so i just drink my smoothies during the day while I do my work. So I never okay. have to take breaks for eating or yeah. have to go to a restaurant to eat or, uh, and I, I designed these shakes in such a way that I can feed myself exactly to a right way of getting my, the right vitamins and stuff yeah. like that. And for me, this is a better way of doing it. But yeah. I just, I didn't, I just, just, I just started doing it. Just, this is my drive kind of, yeah, you okay. know, it's like, so, yeah. So, and, and I enjoy doing these things. So I don't think it's, and I wouldn't say like, I wouldn't go around being like, oh, I'm so good at doing these things. <laughs> or like, oh, look at me. I do this, I drink my smoothies all day long. You know, yeah. no, it's, it, that's not about it. It's about fun in doing that task in a different way than I order people. Cause I like doing it that yeah. way. Okay. Yeah. No, I guess yeah, that makes sense. Right. Yeah. I think, um, yeah. I wouldn't really know what, yeah, what they would say about it. Say, yeah. yeah, what what do you think about it personally? Well, would you do? Would you want to do the test? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, sure. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, um, so it's yeah, finding your strengths. I guess it would be uh, like it will bring you more um, product productivity. I would say is like finding your strengths. You will get more. You'll be better at finding. Uh, achieving your goals mm -hmm. I think um, yeah but so I don't know I, I guess um, this is not where really what the Buddhist thing is, is about, about you know? yeah yeah um, so this all of these are in in, sort of in a certain way external things um, yeah and this complete completive method yeah just um, going back to your to your own thoughts and only noticing or concentrating on or um yeah f like finding the, the character of your mind um, mm -hmm. they so they would say that that will give you more happiness than anything yeah uh, anything not lasting can give and of course like some lasting uh not lasting things 
can give you satisfaction. Yeah. Um, but, but so yeah, but, but so is, non-lasting things are basically well, but, everything. But, but I'm just I'm just thinking like like if it because is it I I'm not, isn't it like even though you're like a Buddhist or something you can still I think use those strength. Yeah. Because they're still in you, but it's it's part of then it would be part of the ident- identity. What is again wrong according to the Buddhist yeah. in a way? Um, but I guess so. Like just you can take Buddhism up to the degree you want to take it. So mm-hmm. um, the way they taught it at those courses was that uh, is the monk way basically. You know? So yeah, you know, the, the way of renunciation. So everything. Yeah everything attachment is like a high level yeah so their yeah. their goal is not necessarily to attain happiness in, in this life yeah okay but that's to reach difference. enlightenment to, to develop your your mind so that you have a bigger chance of reaching enlightenment mm-hmm. if not in this life then the ne- then hopefully the next yeah okay um, that makes a difference and for, yeah for me like um if you don't want to make any assumptions that things like enlightenment or karma exist mm-hmm. you um, then it's perfectly fine to use the lessons of Buddhism, uh, yeah. but in a less extreme way. So you can still do your, do the way you live your life, but um, develop a, a mindset which is more uh, conducive to being satisfied. Yeah, and and, and then yeah, yeah. playing to your strengths is like will give you more satisfaction than not playing to your strengths, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, yeah, but they would say like that. That um, compared to not doing anything and achieve, or well, like not doing anything <laughs> external and, yeah, and, yeah. and internally yeah, developing and cultivating a, 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 a peace of mind and a, like a steady mind mm-hmm. will should bring more lasting happiness. Yeah, um, I would like to believe that. I, I, I don't know. I, like I, I'm, no, I'm that. willing to try uh, doing meditation and. Uh, like retreats and stuff to like kind of find more out but it's very much a, a experience based thing like I don't want to assume too much I don't want to assume that doing things for a long time for doing meditation yeah. for a long time will definitely grant you or give you more happiness yeah. um, but experiencing the change of your mind would be a very nice nice thing to, way to start I, think. I, I would say so and well, because you said you the, the 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 teachings of the Buddhist way, um, you can take them. And how do you, how you see them right now in your life? And um, you want to have some water? Oh, no, okay. I want to have some water. So. But uh, how do you see, how do you see them in, in your life right now? Uh, Just of how I apply them. How do you yeah? How do you apply? Them? That's a interesting. Um, I'm curious. Uh, so yeah, what I try to try to notice is the attachments I have to things. Mm-hmm. Try and and that starts with the more obvious things. So, like, like that. so um, um, attachment to material things that like I I get this urge to buy something off the internet, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm yeah like yeah. oh, I'm gonna sp- spend money and then um, recognizing this urge and mm-hmm. then contemplating whether this will definitely give me more satisfaction. In the long run, yeah, and not just uh, something that I'm looking forward to. And once I have it, it will very like getting a bigger TV, yeah. something like you're craving for. But once you have it, after two weeks, you would stop noticing the size of your TV. Yeah, and you're just at the same level. So yeah, like I, I want to um, notice those things more. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, so you know, buy stupid shit. And try to yeah, make more stupid shit. things you don't need. Yeah, um, and, and and would you call it like more minimalistic then, in a way? Mm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I'm succeeding very well, but um, <laughs> yeah. Well, every step is a step. Yeah. Start where you start where you're at. Uh huh. Exactly. Um, and is so there something that you already didn't buy? Um. <laughs> yeah, like there. Um, like my plan was when I, when I was traveling, I was like, oh, I want to buy buy these clothes, and you know, because you're you're stuck with the same clothes for four months, yeah. wearing the same jeans, and yeah, yeah, swapping yeah, yeah. them out sometimes with my like, jogging uh, pants, but that was it. So they're like, oh, I'm gonna buy all these all this stuff, and then you notice like I'm 
Yeah, it's not gonna bring me anything. Bring me like yeah, because yeah, what what would you then buy? Because you if you don't spend your money on those type of things, what would you spend your money on? No. Um. Well. Th- yeah, things that that I believe that will give me a bit more lasting mm-hmm. satisfaction. Um, for example, I was thinking about buying an e-reader because that will give me the possibility to read more. And I know, recommend it definitely about these, um, like these topics that I'm that we're thinking discussing. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So like things like that. Oh. Ah. Yeah, because oh, what I know is, um, is that I think the two best things, in my opinion, to uh, spend money on are experiences, like following a course in I do an acting course right now. That's like, or whatever, whatever courses, new things to learn. Because what uh, I see is that, uh, for instance, if you take cooking classes, you have an experience of the cooking class, but after that, you have a new skill that will give you more experiences as well, like yeah. new foods you can try, new ways you can learn to cook and. Um, I think that that's very important and the second one is I think um, other people I think that uh, spending money on other people and um, in ways that maybe they wouldn't do themselves or so in terms of gifts in gifts um, but also things that enhance relationships for instance so um, you can for instance following a course together (laughs) it was one of the best things I think or uh, like a, f- uh, a friendship thing you can give uh, you can also design things of course yourself and gifts but I feel like spending money on friends can be helpful but I, I, I'm like I would still actually say that I rather would say you need like actually do, do things together with your friends because if you actually really want to connect with your friends I believe that you have to you can give things that are not necessarily like there can be materialistic but the empathy phase of the thing you can give is very important for instance you can um i can give you a bracelet that i bought for 200 euros yeah Yeah. or i can give you a bracelet that i made myself or that i let someone make for 10 euros but with something in carved that is enhances our relationship and i think that gift has more value to you than the 300 euro bracelet yeah definitely yeah Um, <clears throat> yeah, like personal things will definitely. Yeah. Be. So I, I sometimes I, I doubt. Like, how do you? Because you just talked about not spending. Like, is there something you say that like? Because you have now experience traveling. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you want to travel again. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. But um, is there anything else that you would say like? Because you say you don't need things a lot. So what would you say you do need? What's something really good to spend your money on? Like an e-reader, yeah. Well, things that will make you well Most for me, like I can only speak yeah. for myself. Yeah. Uh, things that make me more uh, satisfied, and uh, at this stage, or this point in my life, I'm I'm just very interested in all these. Yeah, yeah we're talking right now. So that's um, being able to develop that that uh-huh. interest is uh-huh. will, will give me some satisfaction at least. Um, yeah, and so I guess it's finding hobbies that satisfy you for uh, longer periods. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, like I, I came from this meditation course, you know, you come from there thinking yeah. you're all wise and then you go back to your normal life and you still want the same things. Um, hmm. oh, yeah. It doesn't like change you, you didn't, you, like, you're not enlightened or anything, so you come back and you're still. Uh, enjoy these, um, I, like I, for example, I still enjoy v- playing video games a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and that doesn't change, and then so for me, like buying video games will at least give me some satisfaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's though that <laughs> I've now started noticing that there is also this suffering in, ingrained with a lot of things yeah. that you think you want. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. No, I agree. So I don't know. For me, it's noticing these these uh, suffering, uh, these instances of suffering that I didn't as- anticipate when I wanted to create something. Yeah, yeah. No, that's actually a good thing because I noticed that when I like something that I really can't get rid of is that I I like to eat chocolate in the evening, mm. and it's really um, something that 
Like I, I have changed in the last half a year. I have changed a lot of things. I don't barely play video games. You know, um, I barely watch useless things on Netflix or whatever. Only yeah. in the evening, maybe two hours or something. So I learned a lot of habits that are like good for me. But I know that for instance, this is like a habit, and I feel like it's just so. I'm so used to it that it's really hard to yeah. to stop doing it. And I, I, I really like because uh, I know this that it's like. Of so many levels, it's bad for me. Like it's bad for me uh, because in the evening you eat sugar, like uh, then you sleep less good. Um, not only that, but there are quick carbs. That means that you probably turn them into fats. Uh, so you will have more fat on your body, but it's also cause more stress and stuff like that. So it's it's all negative things. But I enjoy it so much, and I'm always yeah. like, I'm really, because I'm I'm I'm. I'm very much doubting in how, in what range uh, do you want to actually also adapt it because in, on one hand I believe that it will cause you more happiness but but if other people don't understand you that's like one of the things that um, um, Seneca one of the Western philosophers once said is that um, you, the, the your goals shouldn't be your ideal world it should be the your your ideal world in combination with the most common world around you because if you always go for the ideal world you get detached from society and they will kick you out okay yeah. and i like that idea in a way of like if i right now would fully go for um this idea okay, or like you know giving up chocolate in the evening yeah. ha- maybe even like hanging out with people or just you know doing way more things with my passion and things like that i feel like you get more detached from society because i don't feel like a lot of people will understand you but on the other hand does that matter if that makes you more happy yeah um that's uh, that, that's something yeah, i think you have to uh, yeah. gauge for yourself um but uh, in, in the, the the example of chocolate i think it's just yeah, like does it bring you satisfaction yeah I think a lot right yeah a lot um so yeah and at this point for you um yeah so it's important i think to like, realize that you're craving something yeah, yeah definitely really craving. think about this the experience itself uh-huh. so um what i believe is that or um, what i maybe believe i, I, I <laughs> haven't made up my mind about it <laughs> so w- what i read is that this um like we evolved not to be dissatisfied yeah because that will make you do things so um your craving for chocolate is bigger than the or is more is is stronger than actually eating it yeah than the experience itself is satisfying yeah um so eating this chocolate um the anticipation for it will will be like yeah okay i'm gonna enjoy this so much and then the actual experience of it it's like it's actually a little bit too dry maybe and you want want to get a, 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 you know a, a sip of water or um the feeling just uh dissipates very f- fast and then yeah. you're craving for more chocolate which is kind of suffering um so really get finding out if this if uh, for example eating chocolate yeah. brings you more happiness even not even in the long run but at that moment that will um thinking yeah. about that no i get what you mean i get what you really get what you mean it's more like um the idea of it than um because the thing is it's basically uh like a dopamine candy like it's like as if you just take a bit of dopamine yeah pop, and then it's gone and but the 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 the, the moment towards it um is also in a way suffering yeah it's suffering but it's also it's um, strong it's your idea yeah. of eating the chocolate is uh, your idea is better than the, the experience yeah, itself i would agree with that yeah. i have the video games a lot actually yeah uh, and i think noticing these things will definitely um, bring you less suffering in the, long run. Uh, the only thing that i really know that i have like and it's but it's also a very old thing is that for instance i like to watch a lot of comedians and i've really thought about it for a while like i watch it in the evening a lot and then I even rewatch some of them and i'm like do I actually enjoy it um, every time? Or is it more the idea of it that yeah. I enjoy? 
But at so this point, I've really noticed that I really enjoy it. Okay. But after I found out about my top five strengths, I really understood it because creativity, so it's like doing things weirdly or yeah. being, uh, but also curiosity, being interested in a lot of things, and that comes over with comedy as well. And humor was also one of them. So it makes sense because actually while watching it, I'm using some of my strengths and that's internally, I think, I believe, at the moment, uh, a way of using actually my strength. Yeah. And I, there's another thing that, that I... That feels satisfying. That feels satisfying. Well, I don't think that, for instance, eating a chocolate um, is using any of my strengths. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that, that or that it ever... But for instance, I do believe that a video game can be something you can actually really enjoy if you really use your strengths yeah i would say if you're if you're challenged and you're yeah you to find your uh, find a solution to problems yeah using creativity or so it's something for instance because you have the experience of flow you know f yeah, flow yeah. yeah right like being totally immersed in something yeah and if you look at the psychology of that it's exactly when your skills and the, the the challenge are exactly high and matched. So it doesn't even have to be high, but if they are matched exactly, yeah. At the at the point that you have to be in the highest use of your skill, and then you learn really fast, and you come in this zone of like complete focus. And I, you can have it in a video game, and this is in psychology at least. At least, um, Cheek sent me high. Uh, one of that's one of the psychologists uh, who f actually discovered the flower, did most research about it. Uh, he um, says that it's one of the the, the, the highest level of experience happiness. Yeah. So that's and 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 for when I first read about it, I thought it was a, a state, but I later discovered that actually a scale you can be constantly in flow, you but to a certain to, to a certain amount. Okay. Um, living in the flow, kind of. Yeah. And. And I haven't read enough about it to really, but it's an interesting concept that, because I recognize it, because the way I actually portray my life sometimes is that um, whenever I, in the evening, I'm very, I'm at, at friends, I'm really in the moment. I really enjoy my time in the moment in the evenings. But during the day, I kind of feel like I'm sitting in a train and I'm just, you know, going. Yeah. And I'm just going yeah. around, going Doesn't around. feel like flow. Yeah. yeah, in a way, it feels like I'm just doing my things and just going, 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 mm -hmm. going. And at the, at the end of my day, I kind of stop at a station and I hang out with my friends there or with whoever is right. there, you know, my new meeting and, you know, and, and I sit in this train and I do feel like the, the, the faster my train goes, the higher I am in a flow, like the more I'm engaged in the things I'm doing yeah. and I'm really focused and everything in the world is just, you're passing by kind of, you know, and I'm just in this train and I'm just doing my thing. And it's yeah. really the way I, f I feel sometimes. And uh, yeah, I guess like. So what I what I think is that the reason being in flow is such a satisfying uh, experience mm -hmm. is that um, you're not thinking. So you're yeah. being in flow is in the being in the now basically. Yeah. And then, yeah. Um, so you're not thinking about past. You're not like worrying about the future. Yeah. You're not worrying about it, the the conversation you just had with somebody and you should have said something else. Mm -hmm. um, so just like uh, the experience of not so like an occupied mind is a satisfied mind basically. Mm -hmm. so what I say is that the, um, so that yeah that kind of really very to me very well explains why being in this flow is such a satisfying thing, but it doesn't you know, for, so for me it's very difficult to find out how to get into um, states like that. For you, yeah, for you. yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, mm. Because I, I know a little bit more about that. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, so, what, for instance, one thing is the engagement in a task is very important. And what if you really look at it, then people are more engaged in things, their the strengths a lot. So, you get more engaged into tasks when you use your strengths. So, what, for instance, is, uh, is very uh, what, uh, advice, advisable is that you, you, you find your strengths and then you kind of use your strengths in everyday tasks. Uh, even your work, for instance, if people maybe are, uh, it's shown that if people work forty years and they always already did the same job always, but they start using their strengths more, they find ways to use their strengths more in their daily tasks of their work. They get more engaged and they experience mm -hmm. more flow in everyday life uh, because they they are more engaged into this situation and um, I, and it's and it's also about 
not overachieving. Because if you want to really, you know, because then your skill level isn't uh, equal to your uh, achievement level. Yeah. And you really want to have that, you know, that, that right corner, they're exactly in the flow. And I think that that is really... So finding the challenge that, that suits your skills. Probably. Yeah, yeah. And by and, and, and you can, in using with that, your strengths, the things you're good at. And you, that you're nat naturally attracted to do automatically, yeah. kind of. And if you use these things in the task you do uh, at the, the right level, and if you're, for instance, um, there's a skill, and I think if you're below it, so you uh, below, so it's a little bit of an achievement, you get bored or um, you're distracted really yeah. fast. And then after that, it's bored, it's even lower than that. But if you're overachieving, you get stressed because you're doing too much. So that's kind of a skill where you can notice on when you do a task, um, are, are, is this task overachieving or underachieving? Yeah, and then you can make, make adjustments yeah. to try to get closer to that. Get closer to the, to the skill. Mm. Because I, I really believe that, what I know is that in being in a flow um, makes every everyday life quite easy. You, you, you start doing things. Um, and I also believe that, for instance, uh, flow is also um, happens more with artists as, and people do sports um, be because, or it happens more easily because there are very clear tasks and clear goals. That's very important. You need to be very, you need to know exactly where you're working towards. For basketball, yeah. I had it in my screen. It's like you can, you know, you want to score, and then I just. You know, you just come in this flow, you want to win. And it's just, you know, you just get into that. You just go. Yeah. Because uh, and, and, you know where you're going. But if, if you if you don't know where you're going, it's very difficult. Because then you're not on the track of the, of the train, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that's the... I guess like, for for artists, that would be similar. Um, so, like, because you can... In, if you try to write music or mm -hmm. try to yeah. paint something, like, it can vary. Like, a lot of the times you'll be... Um, you don't really want know what you want, like, mm -hmm. and you know you, you yeah. get have this vague idea, but then you're worrying about oh, would this be nice? Uh, what would other people think? Whatever. And mm -hmm. if if like inspiration hits, then I think that will um, allow you to be in flow because like you get this yeah. clear idea. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Like I want this, and then you try. The only thing you're doing is trying to get there, and not necessarily trying to think about what. Yeah. What you should be doing. Exactly, I, I do think that's very important. It's very important to have this idea in your head of where you're going, and then just and it's it doesn't matter how long it takes to get there, but it's about the way, like just you know where you want to go, so you can just yeah. test things out mm -hmm. and just do something, and then. Then you become in this this state of you know trying and um, um, what is also like very interesting about it is that if you are um, in this if you hit the state um, and you're done with the task you're very exhausted because it's very because you're highly focused yeah. and that's also because whenever um, uh, I end my that's really weird because whenever I end my day I get home and I start being in the moment suddenly i get really tired and it's really weird because um i can i can even stop my day at five get home but I'm still wanting to do some things yeah. but i'm instantly tired because getting home is for me really a signal of being done with my day yeah and then i'm just bam i'm tired and be but i could still go till nine o'clock if i wanted mm -hmm. to because i'm then in the flow but as yeah. soon as that hits me, I mean, and that's for me also a reason why I took the smoothies at some point, because it, uh, it, it having to go to lunch uh, takes you out, takes me out of my flow. Yeah. Well, um, uh, you can also, for instance, be uh, keep going if you're in the flow. I can just I can work all day long without eating anything if I'm in the flow. But uh, what I know is if you do it a couple of days, your body gets really tired, and you get really tired. And I really and it's unhealthy to do in general. I yeah. think. So for me, it was really important to finding a way of how can I keep going while I give my body actually, body actually the energy to do it yeah. without taking a longer break. You're slurping your smoothies. Yeah, just slurping my smoothies, yeah. you know, and yeah, in a way, I don't know, like, um, maybe it's, yeah, it's probably, I'm probably wrong about some of the things about it.